Welcome to Friday! It's the weekend and welcome to Zero Page Homebrew where we play new games on classic consoles. Except we'll be looking at another console today that is not classic. It's pretty new. It has a classic twist to it. And it has a classic look to it. Oh. It's got wood grain too. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's not classic. But it'll play the classic games. it plays the classic games. Yeah. yeah. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Um, it's been like a month. I think that's right yeah I know you all missed me so much yeah they were begging for you I got like 20 messages saying where's the Darcy <laughs> mm-hmm no I didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no I, I got that <laughs> so today we're gonna be we broadcast in 60 frames a second so if you're not watching in 60 uh, you should be because you're missing literally half of the, the show, show yeah. literally yeah. <laughs> And and not even figuratively, like literally. <laughs> and and video games sometimes. Uh, video games have been using sixty frames a second forever. Um, and television has been sixty frames a second, interlaced, and that's what they've used. It it is flashing sixty frames right, a second. Right. So, all the old games use sixty, and and the Atari uses that to its uh, advantage by splitting the sixty up into kind of thirty. Going back and forth, so little this little the that, flickering. little this little yeah, that. Yeah, and our eyes are like, uh, okay, yeah, that, it works, it works. Yep. Who was that Darcy again? A thrust is completely forgotten about you. Oh, a month is too long. <laughs> it is. It just <laughs> pff, gone goldfish. Two weeks memory. is barely enough. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at um, a Stella, a huge update for the Retron seventy seven. I know it was announced a couple weeks ago. Um, but I wanted to wait for Darcy to be here because he has one too. And so this benefits him. Benefits everyone, not just him. Including me. Inclu he's in Instead the Instead of everybody un not including me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Only Darcy this benefits. So that's why I waited. Um, it's an update to the Retron 77. A huge, massive update that changes its status in my mind from don't buy this <laughs> to definitely buy this. Or, or buy it. Maybe not definitely, but buy it is worth it. But we'll get into that. Um, and we're going to be playing three games. Uh, Red Shirts from 2010. Arcade Pong from 2019. It's an update in 2019. And Hunchy 2 from 2005. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank everybody who's here today. And a whole bunch of people are here today. Uh, Thomas, Thrust26, Dianoid, Dirty Harry, Splendid Nut, Dan AVC, uh, Militant Buddhist One, I Supposed to RC7E, a lot of familiar names. Uh, anybody else? No, nobody else. You know, there's a lot of lurkers. And also, there's a lot of people that watch it later on YouTube because they have to work or, you know, do whatever during the time we broadcast. Quit your jobs, watch the show live! Right. Or watch the show at your jobs. Yeah, and I wouldn't fired. encourage that. I, no. I don't encourage either. <laughs> Not quitting <laughs> or watching. You can watch it later on YouTube Although or either one does lead towards being able to watch it live at home. That's true. Yeah. Uh, working from home, working from home. See, there's there's an advantage. You can you can slack off if you're on your own boss and you don't yeah. get fired. Yeah. Very handy. Uh, I want to thank is. the Twitch subscribers, which a lot of the names are the same. Uh, Charles and Check, Gredums, <laughs> Ground Trooper, I Posted, Johnny, WC23, Mr. Fix, RC7E, Spiceware, S. Ramirez, 2008, Tiki, Dan K. And you can support the show too for free uh, if you subscribe, if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime. Just click that button. Or you can pay money, as some of these people do. And uh, it's evening in Germany, yes. These early shows work really well for people in Europe, like uh, right, right. Thomas, Thrust26, and Dirty Harry, and anybody else who's in uh, Europe. So it's, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the shows at 11 and 12, because it's like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. GMT. Yeah. And you just add the numbers to that. It's easier for us, too. It is, because you get it done at the beginning of the day, beginning-ish of the day, and yeah, it's just really, really simple to do. Um, and there's no poll question, there's no mail, news feedback, so this is kind of the, the Retron 77 is kind of like an update, it's kind of news, so it kind of works into there. 9pm local time here, okay, yeah, that's pretty convenient, 9 to 11, yeah. So, a while back, I can't remember when this was released, but I know it was months and months, 
last year. Yeah, I think it was like, last year. It was definitely like last year. September, October, something like yeah, that. And um, I was really excited about it because it's really small. It has HDMI out. This is a Retron 77. Um, it is powered by USB, so very convenient. It takes the original joysticks DB9 input, so yep. joysticks, paddles, whatever you throw at it. Um, it's got really nice buttons on it for all the things you need to do on the A2600. Yeah. Um, it has a cartridge port, which is awesome. Because that is awesome, yeah. Then yeah. you can play all the original games yep. on it. Um, and uh, it actually ships with a joystick. Uh, this is the one with the original joystick, which breaks. And since Mine hasn't broken yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> However, the I've... used one that I bought because the original one would break. Yes. Didn't work. Didn't. At all. Oh no. <laughs> so you're forced to use the original one. That's right. Um, I haven't used the the one that shipped with it because I don't like that joystick. Mm. I've, I've never liked that joystick. The CX40 or CX10. That's its brand name. The original Atari joysticks. They just hurt my hand. They're just too stiff for me. So I use a lot, a variety of different joysticks. But anyway, it ships with that. And they've updated it since then with a non-breaking joystick. Ah. What's it called? I can't remember. It's got a name that implies that it's not going to break anymore. <laughs> 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 um, and I think they sent it to all the people that bought. Like They sent it for free to all the people that bought. I didn't bother getting it. I don't know why. Maybe I should. If it's free. Maybe it's not free. It should be. Maybe you have to send this one back. But anyway, when this came out, we tried it out and it was subpar. It was not good. It was not good at all. And my biggest complaint, the trooper. There you go. See, it kind of implies, yeah, it's going to be a trooper. It's going to uh -huh. power through the abuse that you're going to yeah. give to it. And occasionally drive a tank or ride a horse. Yes. And is that is that the, the job of a trooper? Yeah. Yeah, armored. Armored soldiers or troopers. Oh, okay. And we've got ground trooper there. So he yeah. would remember the name. Um, but my com the two complaints I had, one, uh, one is completely fixed now, and the other one can't be fixed. Um, the biggest problem, I and, and it plays ROMs. That was the big thing. Mm -hmm. That was the really big selling point. You can load a ton of ROMs in it. You don't have to bring your cartridges. And it's super portable, right? So you can yeah, bring it to yeah. your friend's house, HDMI, yeah, done. Just plug it in. It's plug... super simple. Yeah. yeah. And and I got it because you could load ROMs for all the homebrew. So, um, oh, and they didn't ask Ground Trooper's permission to use his name. <laughs> uh, so yes. I would, you know, get after them, send a strongly worded letter. <laughs> um, but um, so we played it when, when we got it. Um, on the show, and I think we're probably the first people to stream about the Retron 77. Got a lot of lot of views. <laughs> it's yeah, probably, yeah. I think, one of the most watched videos of of this channel. And um, the biggest complaint I had was the screen tearing. Where, I, I mean, it doesn't happen anymore because video cards are awesome now and programming is awesome. But it mm. happened on computers uh, for a long time. Where... It's updating the screen and it gets to a point and it's like, oh, I've got a new frame to draw. I'm just going to draw that new frame instead of halfway finish. down yeah, the screen yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of finishing the one I've already started. So you have half the frame drawing one frame, uh, half the screen drawing one frame and half the screen drawing another frame. So say you're moving a character from left to right or whichever way this yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> say your guy is going this way. So... It draws it, the, the guy's here, draws him there, and then all of a sudden the video card has a new frame where your guy is updated. So he's. His legs are here and his head's over here. Yeah, and he's cut off person. and he, you know, he should die because his, half his body is cut off, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, and it looks terrible. And you only see it for, say, a 60th of a second, especially on like the Atari or, you know, 60 is you, the normal number for refresh, 60 yeah, hertz. Yeah. So it would be torn in half and it just looks terrible and sometimes it's constantly tearing or it's got it's out of sync and this tear line is like moving down the screen. <laughs> so and then it goes off the screen and comes back. So it's slightly out of sync. 
Anyway, that was solved a long time ago on computers. Yeah. And it's called uh, V-Sync, I believe. And it has other names as well. Vertical Sync. Yeah. So that if you send a frame to the video card, it finishes that frame. It's right. like, now I'm not going to get interrupted, which seems like a very simple thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, just finish your frame. and But you'd need a buffer. It's like, you'd have to have the frame you're drawing and the frame you're going to draw. And finish this one and then do the next one. And if you don't have time for the next one, wait, wait, and all that stuff. Um, so, out of, sh out of the box, this does not have vertical sync. Right. And there was tearing. Most old Atari games are single screen and you don't notice that like there's not a lot of horizontal movement yeah, yeah. and also the Atari's not great at horizontal movement because the play field is it goes in chunks of four if you're using play field to simulate the movement so most people would not notice that but on homebrew there's a very advanced games yeah they're pushing the limit yeah they've got eight-way movement um especially like draconian or something where you're flying in space and it's yeah, moving yeah. all over you see it so easily or um say like a game like flappy bird or something now that, that's and it shipped with a version of that yeah yeah and you could and the pipes are moving across the screen the things you have to avoid and they're tearing like crazy and it looked terrible and that's that's one of the pack-in games yeah and i was yeah. very surprised that they would put a pack-in game that showed off the tearing terribly Okay. <laughs> the other problem, which is not fixed. Uh, oh, well, there's three problems. The other problem that's not fixed and can't be fixed is you can't play any game that has an ARM chip um, in this uh, off, off of cartridge. Oh, right, right. Because it doesn't know how... The and that can't be fixed. It can't be fixed. Yeah. It's hardware-based. Right. Uh, right now, they nobody thinks it can be fixed anyway. Right. Um, unless there's an update maybe from Hyperkin themselves updating the hard, the way it reads hardware. But right now it's theorized that... Well, no, could you have good. like a pre-cartridge that <sighs> fixes the problem and like just sends the data through the cartridge? Quite possibly. Like pre-processes it? That's quite possible. I'm not a hardware guy. Um, people in the chat would be able to answer that a little bit better. Plus, many games which do not use Atari's bank switching, these cannot be dumped, too. Yeah, because the way this, I believe, works, and you can correct me, is that it reads the cartridge. Oh, that's <clears throat> it. It reads the cartridge, dumps it to its memory, mm -hmm. and plays it from memory. Uh, but that's not the way ARM chip cartridges work. Right. They're right. active. They're right, constantly right, yeah. working. So... If you are just, you plug in the cartridge, it reads it, it's done with the cartridge. Right, right. But there's things that need to be done constantly. And, and there, Dirty Harry says, Melody games cannot work, not even with an update for Hyperkin. So there, that's, I mean, we figured it out just theorizing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't work because it needs to keep reading it. And Melody's a, a board that has an ARM chip on it that uh, Atari H uses just for every, almost every game now. Um... So that is a complaint. Um, and the third complaint I had, but there's kind of a workaround for that now. But, the, but before, there was no workaround. The third complaint I had is that it didn't, it shipped with an ancient version of Stella. Like, abysmally ancient. <laughs> like, I can't remember what it was, like 12 years old or something? Like, or just eight? It was really bad. It was like version three. And we are on version six now. And I think version 6 was out. At least version 5 was out. Um, and so it couldn't play a lot of the newer homebrew that took advantage of some of the advances. Yeah. yeah. And some of them just even, wouldn't even work right. Or it would only work with like really old ones or like really more compatible versions of, of homebrew games that didn't really push the limit. So it wouldn't work, at, and it definitely wouldn't work with um, CDF games, which are a brand new way of programming games. Not brand new, it's been around for a while. But it, and that only worked with, I believe, version 5 of Stella, right. and definitely with version 6. Um, uh, so it didn't play any of those games. 
So it couldn't read those games from cartridge, and you couldn't play them in emulation. So right, I was right. like, well, what good is this for me, being a homebrew enthusiast, <laughs> wanting to play the newest games where you couldn't play them on cartridge and you couldn't play them off SD card as well? So the uh, community said, we will not stand for this. <laughs> we, we will make this work um, because it does most of what you want. Yeah, right? yeah. If it was just garbage so out of the gate, yeah. it would be like, no, who cares about this? We'll wait for a better one. But it's so close, you know, that they were like, okay, let's, let's give this a try. And today we have a bunch of people in the chat that uh, do work on Stella, and Stella is the underlying um, emulator, and it is emulation. It's not hardware emulation like a FPGA. It is a program running on the box that emulates playing the games. So it is Stella, Stella 3, and what they have done is updated it to Stella 6 now, which plays everything. Plays everything yeah. So let's uh, just quickly read through the update here, because I did do I did uh, read this update when it did come out. Um, a Dirty Harry post on April sixth, two thousand nineteen. So just uh, under a month ago, ladies and gentlemen, the Stella team is proud and happy to present the first beta release of Stella Six running on the Retron seventy seven. With this release, you will get Stella Six on your Retron seventy seven at full speed, including cycle exact audio. TV emulation, scan lines, and phosphor, all with beautiful tear-free V-Sync. And that was one of my biggest problems, is it was terrible to look at. Like, I, I, I wouldn't even play it. Was it, though? Was it, it was. Terrible? It was I, terrible. I just, I, it annoyed me I, all to hell. I haven't been able to tell from your story <laughs> how much terrible. you hated that. I hated it a lot. <laughs> because it just... Oh. Um, you can really <laughs> grab this release from the GitHub page. The installation procedure is the same. Um... Yeah, what you do is uh, you download the the um, image um, from GitHub, and you use a disk imaging program on Mac or PC, and you write the image to the SD card. I think it it does come with one, um, and you write it. It's and it overwrites crazy everything. small. It's super small. It's it so takes two small, seconds. Like, <laughs> I I just I'm. Yeah. amazed that they found any of that small <laughs> yeah oh the actual sd card it's like 128 megabytes or something like oh that. yeah and which you know it's it's big enough well, like it's, it's totally big enough it, <laughs> this is not a complaint it's just but it's amazing i, I that actually they looked it. for smaller sizes for backups for raspberry pi yes and i was like yes, oh the smallest too. i could get was like eight gigs that yeah. was the super cheap tiny ones yeah like, and like I had some two gigs. I since left found over. a two gig oh, and you? a and a four gig, but like <laughs> I had to look. <laughs> yeah, and, and for like if you know Atari games, I think the biggest possible one that anybody has ever made is five hundred and twelve k, and that is far beyond. And I think that's the bad Apple demo. Um, most of them are at max out at thirty two k kilobytes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so small. And then, but most of them are 4K, like the, yeah, if, like the majority of them are 4K, and then an 8 and 16, 32. Um, and Thrust says most of the work was done by Dirty Harry, so thank you so much, Dirty Harry, for all the work that you have done to get this fun piece of hardware that was terrible on release to something that is completely usable and actually awesome now. It's really, really, really good. Um, so you, you just get the image, put it on the SD card, pop the SD card in, turn it on, and you're running. There's no firmware updating. There's no, like, waiting and, oops, I turned it off halfway, and now I have a brick. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like Raspberry Pi, like you were saying before the show. You just pop it in, and you're running that version. You're running of, that version, yeah, of, it's great. Of yeah. RetroPie or whatever, and, yeah. and this one, you're running that version of Stella. And you can go back to the old version if you want. Um so yeah, it fixes not only the V-Sync, uh, let's see. Uh, while this release is fully ver working and playable, it's a beta release, so there's a few known issues, and these are nothing. The color in black and white and four by three and 16 by nine buttons are swapped, not a big deal. Uh, the 16 by nine mode is not yet available, and anybody who plays in 16 by nine mode should be shunned. 
shunned because <laughs> it's all terrible and stretchy. But does that mean it stretches it or does yes. that mean that it just puts a square on your screen without you having to mess around with your screen? Uh, I th no, it pads. I have seen it and I, I did play with the different settings right. and saw that you could do widescreen, which confused me. I think uh, the 4x3 mm -hmm. is a padded 4x3. Oh, okay. So it's not a 4x3 and your TV set to 16x9, so it stretches it. Right, okay. Yeah, so six, the 16x9 is garbage stretch. Right, right. Like the way it's not supposed to look. Yeah. Uh, 16x9 mode's not yet available, so that doesn't matter. Uh, there may be some uh, issues with aspect ratio correction for PAL games, so PAL people will have to wait a little bit for a perfect... For perfect aspect ratio. I was just thinking the projector. We have a projector at home. Uh, oh, uh, next time. We'll play some big games. I was thinking you could make it even bigger if you're playing uh, Atari because mm. the limitation on the wall is the width currently. Oh, so it's square. Like yeah. it's higher. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Next time. Next time. <laughs> we'll update yours yeah. and load some uh, awesome homebrew on it. Um, and uh, another thing that we will get to in a second is this this micro USB port right here. Mm -hmm. It is primarily used for powering it. Right, yep. that's how it gets its power. And a uh, Dirty Harry says Fluxit discovered that this micro USB port is an actual active USB port. It's a oh. real USB port. Oh, nice! So you can you use can it. Plug a hub in. Plug a hub. And you would get power and access to USB. Yeah, usability for anything, yeah. devices. Um, so people have now used, um, because you can get adapters for Atari controllers for your compu computer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a US, like DB9 to USB adapter. So <laughs> it's kind of ironic. It's, so you have, you would plug a, I mean, it has DB9s on the front. Um, but you can plug a USB to DV9 on the back, and that would be... And people have discovered that these these don't support everything. Oh, okay. These don't support rollerballs, but this does support rollerballs on the back. Because it turns it into USB. Yes, and it uh, digitizes it, which uh, this, which the Stella handles. And this is not... Not handling. Why would people want 16 by 9 Dianoid asks. I have no idea. Some people think filling your screen is better no matter what. I don't know. Um, so, now it can play all the CDF games. And correct me if I'm wrong, there are only four CDF games? Uh, Draconian, Super Cobra Arcade, Mappy, and Wizard of War. Um, but there might be more. Those are the big ones I know. Um, so let's let me go through the detailed updates. I'm trying to get the SD card out. Uh, near how big is that one? So one twenty eight. So that's the one I came with. Uh, near perfect TIA em emulation, cycle exact audio that sounds just like the real thing, TV emulation including scan lines and phosphor effect, and we'll take a look at those. Yeah, I want to see the phosphor effect and yes. TV. Uh... Uh, emulation. emulation and the scan lines and yep. yeah smooth video without tearing yay support for all cartridges out there including arm based games um through roms not like it, it's yeah yeah it's, yep, yep. it's it sounds like it's support for all cartridges yeah, yeah. but it's not uh some people were confused when he posted that but he uh updated them later the firmware contains many other enhancements over the original many of which are inherited from the original community image by remo Mitt williams including the hyperkin gui is replaced by stella's own launcher so if people have used Stella emulation on their PCs, they'll be very familiar with the new screen because it replaces that kind of selecting consumer-friendly looking thing. It's still really easy to use. It's just a list of games. Yeah, yeah. And kind of a directory structure if you make other directories. Right, it's right. It's not a problem at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've also made it so you press the fry button on the back and it goes back to the uh, menu that's nice so good you don't have to yeah. turn it off and turn it on again yeah because the turning it off and on again yeah I, I there was something about having to do that that well, was it takes like 10 seconds or something yeah this like is, it took it took longer than i expected like it took 
like this, you go flick, flick, and this is like... Yeah, so it's now. closer to what that's an original better. Atari is. And it go instant, right back to the menu. Yeah, that's great. Um, support for USB controllers, game pads, joysticks, keyboards. So you can actually use a USB controller. Like your favorite anything. Whatever anything, it is. Anything, PS3 ah. controller, anything. Huh. So it's it's opened it up completely for that. Um, you'll need a USB Y cable to connect to them while powering the device at the same time because it only has one, right? Could you use a hub? Uh, yes, I believe yes for multiple joysticks. Because you yeah. just you just need something but to convert it. Your, your yeah, hub one. We'll get to that yeah. in a second because you do need do it, a, yeah. yeah you need a special cable. But beyond that. Everything's normal for and USB. Like not a USB go to go. Or yes, go that, that's what it is. You yeah. want that one? Yes, oh, USB okay. to go. Uh, uh, UTG. USB to go? Is that the acronym? Anyway. Um, a development mode that allows you to connect a device through a supported USB network dongle and access shell via SSH. So it has like, you can get into this oh, through wow. networking as well. So wow. if you're. Um, a developer, I guess it would be helpful in that respect. Um, or, you know, people hacking. OTG. OTG. Over, on the go. On the go. On that's the go. what it is. Yeah. To go. To, to take away. <laughs> yeah. On the Carry go. Out. And this is an on the go <laughs> kind of thing. Drive through. Um, uh, known issues. The firmware is currently in beta state. Believe me, it's very usable. Uh, several known issues. Fry does not work. Well, it does something else right now. Uh, yeah, we know that one. We know that one. There may be some other bugs, so report them if you see bugs. Um, okay, so let's set it up now that we've gone through that. So to get all the goodness, like you don't have to have uh, an OTG cable to use to this. To run it. Um, but if you, want to use, you want to do. if you want to use the USB functions, which you might if you have your favorite USB controller to play it, um, I will go to the camera and show you what this is. So it is a uh, blurry mess. Hide your face. Or I'll put my hand over your face. There it is. <laughs> uh, Sorry. So did anyone notice I tried to hide my face by closing my eyes? <laughs> <laughs> You're like a cat or a, a dog. So one of them is uh, you plug in to the uh, Retron 77. And the other one is you plug the power into this one. And then on the other end is where you plug all the USB <laughs> devices. Okay, you're fine. Really doing this is enough. You have to hide eyes. Like yeah, my eye. I opened it up and like oh, you my eye see. got into focus. No, I got into focus and that went blurry. So we have to have like masks, <laughs> just temporary masks, or we can just cover our mouths. Maybe just covering our mouths. Try that. No, it's the eyes. Try covering one eye. No, one eye didn't do it. Try it. Okay, go back to normal. Oh, but both my eyes were covered. <laughs> now look straight at the camera. And cover one eye. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. but look. It kind of works. Watch this, though. Well. Did it steal it back? Yeah, it stole it back to me. For one eye. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's silliness. <laughs> that's silliness. That's all the silliness you get <laughs> this episode. Unless there's more. <laughs> there and then, you, more then you'll get more. So that's what you need to you use USB devices. You plug uh, the one that normally plugs in to the back. Then you plug your power into this one and you plug USB devices into this one, which is uh, what I'm going to do right now. So or here's a the USB power. Hub. Yep. Or a USB hub or any number of things into this. So I'm going to plug the power into this. So now it is like kind of a Y cable. And yeah. so power is going to it. And then I'm going to plug a keyboard into it. You should wear a ring Rings with a face on it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, then it shows up here. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to plug a keyboard into it. So I've got a keyboard. And here is it. And US, the uh, card's in there, SD card. Excellent. Actually, this is pretty long. I don't know if my HDMI cable is long enough for that, but we will see. Not quite. Mm, it's there. long enough. It's like here. That, will, that might okay. make it. Because I want to show buttons and stuff while we're doing this. So you plug your HDMI into the back as well. And let's switch over. 
And I think we're on HDMI input. Let's see. Actually, I don't think we are. Nope. Okay. Okay, so let me switch over so you can see it booting up. There we go. Now I've got it set by four by three, so some of the menu you won't see, but when we get into the games, you it'll be fine. But you'll get—I think it gives a good enough look that you'll you'll understand it. Okay, so I've got my keyboard here. Let's boot it up, and it takes three, four, five, six, seven. About seven seconds. It's not too bad. It's not torturous. It feels like your screen is wrong too. Yeah, there's overscan things oh, you can't going. Fix that? Well, I don't want to. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> because I have it set for I, the twenty six hundred. Blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, I get it. But people can see. Um, I've reloaded. Oh, and it's better on there. Uh, it's different. <laughs> uh, the bottom and the top yeah, are better. Yeah. yeah. yeah bottom and you, top yeah. are better. So they're seeing the full vertical. We're not. Oh. We're seeing a bit more horizontal than them. Anyway, so I've loaded all the games that did come on the last version mm -hmm. of the Stella, um, the build from that was distributed by Hyperkin. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Amoeba Jump came with it, Boulder Dash Demo 2, uh, Flappy, that was the one that shows a lot of tearing. Might um, be a good choice. Yep. Uh, I did not plug a joystick into this, so you've got a keyboard. Can you can you play with a keyboard? <laughs> you can play with the keyboard. Do it. So let's just do the keyboard, and that shows off the keyboard too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm moving the menu with the keyboard, as you can see right here. There you go. In see, case you so, thought he was lying. That's right, <laughs> lying. It's a big uh, old liar. So let's just load up this. Um, And there we go. Is this how you supposed this game? I think it is, actually. It does seem to have all Lots the of lines and all They're the They're not pixels. missing anything. Yeah. No, yeah, so you're seeing the full screen there. So anyway, let's crash. And it goes, do. It's a, sim uh, are a the sample lines, from Homer Simpson. Are the lines, is this normal? The uh, lines we're seeing? This is, this is default, the lines. This is the default what that um that it comes with that's built in that they've they've set it for the stella oh okay so how you see that's 16 by 9 ish i suppose it says it, it is only because of the vertical isn't as long as the width yeah i there's, think there's a black there's, bar at the bottom yeah there's lots of room and you guys can see that too there's lots of room at the bottom yeah. um so to get into the menu um you can press tab and you get into the normal Stella menu. Oh. And, and you couldn't do that without a keyboard. No, you, you just had no options. I mean, my, my joystick doesn't have a tab button. <laughs> no, mine doesn't either. <laughs> so you do have to plug a keyboard into that. So let's go into the video. video options, which is the most. So right now it is set for RGB mode. Mm -hmm. And the scan lines are at 25%. So let's just crank those up. So the scan lines, that's replicating what a television would have? Is that it? Yes. So this is part of the, oh, this is part of the replicating a TV. Yes. I was expecting, oh. I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest, but what I was thinking was there would be like ghost images on the, <laughs> on the screen uh, and oh. it would be all like they do have washed that. out. Do no, they? they do have oh, that okay, effect. Okay. We'll do that. We'll okay. do that. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I apologize. There. There's the 100% kind of um, scan lines, which is... Pretty that is intense. reminiscent. That is reminiscent of the television, although it still looks way better than the television. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, really. <laughs> old old TVs. Yeah, it's a bit intense, and it's a bit compressed. There, it may not look as good like a one to one. Yeah, because actually, I've it resized looks, it. It looks on that preview at least. It looks a lot more intense than it does on the actual screen. Yeah, so but that's probably just because of the preview, right? So yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that is squished down as well. Yeah, yeah. So it might be fine. I think I've done a one-to-one -one there. I, uh, so, okay, so I've turned it off now. Oh, I guess it didn't take. <laughs> no, it didn't. Uh, so let's take the scan lines. Actually, just go to this. Disabled. No, that did not work. I think I'm doing something wrong. I think I've... Oh, oh, it still has this. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. 
So you can have it disabled and testing and lines as well. So let's go down to zero. So you have to use the keyboard for this. There, there you go. go. So it's clean, super clean on this. And I do, I honestly do not know which I prefer. I don't like scan lines. I, but if you really like that CRT look to it and. I just find that it adds like a texture to it. It does, yeah. Maybe this is too clean, you know, and you're used to it. And, and I know some games like Beyond the Atari era kind of use those lines to yeah, their advantage yeah. like yeah, they yeah. they know they're there and they build them into the game yeah yeah um so let's look at that's probably it it's like it's like the a thing. fake sign of quality yeah <laughs> so let's take a look at what you were talking about ah. like w that it actually emulates the look of a crt and bad, bad adjust bad adjust so this that's is awesome. a bad crt uh, yeah. Yeah. So there, it's all kind of, it's kind of mush, <laughs> uh, and the so colors. Are I don't know why anybody would want this, but <laughs> now, there we are. The colors are washed this out. This is what Atari video games look like there's, for me. There's some ghost at best. <laughs> See, the thing, the problem is, they're still nice and crisp, square. Yes. Instead yeah. of like mushed into, like you're missing, you're getting all of the the lines. Like some of the overscan would and the, disappear in the and the horizontal is not flipping and there's not ghosting or zzz, you know interference yeah, yeah. so it's not as bad as it could be mm -hmm. but it does it is it is that is good that's that's yeah. genuine yeah and it is composite which is kind of bad and the ns videos which is a bit better and rgb which is pretty much perfect and and then you can just turn it off um and phosphor blending as well which is very nice which you can't do on an actual piece of hardware for new displays right so it has a phosphor die-off time, hmm. right? So that blends the flickering on some games. Um, so that is uh, an, an interesting option. So if you wanted to record... I notice it on this, and it, it was... There's it no flicker on this. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't have any... Um, so let's, let's take a look at a flippy game. Or not a flippy. A um, uh, um, phosphory game. Yeah, one that flickery. Flickery. There we go. So let's go out of this and Press, uh, the fry button. Go that one. Whoa, look at that immediate. There you go. That's fantastic. And I don't think any of these. What about Defender? No. No. Well, yeah, Defender has a lot. But we're going to get into the homebrew now. Okay. Because we've done enough. Actually, all that is homebrew. But this is the advanced homebrew that was not working before on this system like you could uh, not play you any of these games before okay yeah so let's do uh draconian which does uh take advantage of flicker um because there's so many actually mappy's a pretty pretty good one for that um so because it has so many mice uh so many um cats on the screen on the same line draconian i remember like that was very uh yeah yeah and draconian too and this is why well, yeah. so there we go actually you can see it on the mappy up there because that's using the flicker to do um, uh, colors. Yeah. So let's like crank that up. So right now it's at fifty-two percent. See, when you go into the menu, it shows the half half of the um, what it's drawing. Yeah, yeah, because right it's because it goes paused perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go to a hundred percent phosphor blending. Look at that solid 100% ah, solid yeah. so it takes 1 30th oh boy that's not supposed to happen but anyway it's still beta <laughs> it's still beta um so it takes the 30th of a second and puts what is happening oh boy oh boy oh boy <laughs> let's just start with that running again nice and clear yes <laughs> maybe it's the <laughs> I think putting it at it's 100 too, is too, a problem. I think it is lasts that, forever. Yeah, it seems to last forever. Maybe let's go 99. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100 is bad. Oh, oh my goodness. That's way too oh, high. Way yeah. too high. Never mind. Yeah, that explains let's why it was at 50%. go 70. That it's is really funny, fun. though. Yeah. It's like glitch video. You ever yeah. seen those videos? 
where there's supposed to be a new frame that comes in like like you're seeing say somebody's face and then in the original video it's supposed to flip over to say somebody's skateboarding right oh yeah the way video is compressed is that it has um p frames mm -hmm. right. and when a scene switches that puts a p frame in there and i frames are just intermediate frames so if it misses that p frame it takes the new scene and uses the old information so it starts smearing the person's face <laughs> across the screen that's kind of what this is at 100 yeah. percent. it just keeps it forever that's what it does it was keeping yeah. it forever Nathan Strum says phosphor is a little too high. <laughs> yeah, we uh, realize that. <clears throat> I'm gonna die because I paused for a second. There's no pausing in Mappy. Nope. No pausing. Round one. There we go. So as you can see, maybe it's a bit high. There's a little bit of streaky streakiness, right? Yeah. But it's, it's it's not too bad. Depends on if you're after the uh, negative effects of the phosphor. Or just the positive effects of the Yeah, answer. yeah, exactly. So you can set it to what you want because it kind of looked like there's two cats there. It was so so blurry. So maybe the um, the original setting was pretty good. <laughs> what was it at? Fifty two or let's say fifty. That's not bad. I mean, it's a little bit of little tiny bit of streakiness but I think it's probably worth it that's yeah, pretty good but anyway that's a setting and you can access all the settings here like you can go to the input um, change what your joystick does uh, change the key map map out uh, key mapping um, change the volume which is really, um, really handy. And how, how big of quality. Um, yeah, I want it for screenshots too. That's really handy for um, the video, having the phosphor way up. Because you saw the title screen was perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Usually for screenshots, I use, you know, Stella, which is yeah. exactly the same. So, um, yeah, uh, the user interface, Stella options. You can turn on the developer settings. So it, it puts randomness and kind of like when you turn on the Atari 2600, everything's random. Like everything's not set. So if somebody doesn't program it and set things to zero, right. um, this kind of emulates the randomness of the original Atari 2600 hardware. So it helps you debug your right, program. Right. Anyway, that's one of the, let's see, game properties. Um, I don't know if they have saving yet on here so if you set something it's like oh this game is not a cdf game it's actually you know whatever 3f tiger vision because sometimes they um accidentally auto tech properly improperly right um and also i believe stella detects um pal 60 games as ntsc games and then the colors are all crazy so you can correct that and force it to PAL, and then it'll right, be right. proper. So, but I don't think they have saving going just yet. So if you say, change one of these things, it'll only be for this session. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so it has all the normal Stella things. We won't get into that now. Um, but anyway, 100% improvement. Oh, did I finish the level? I you did. did. Awesome. <laughs> okay, and you know, here you go. That was Mappy. Let's take a look at Draconian quickly. So you can prove, I can prove that everything is, uh, Dirty Harry says, next beta. Awesome. For the saving. And this is one of my favorite games. Love it. Love it. Space shooter. An awesome space shooter on the 2600. What could be better? And I did have the world record. I think I got beat. So I have to uh, do that on the marathon. Did I talk about the marathon? that we're going to have. Nice. Um, we're going to have a 12-hour marathon of, of the... Um, I'm a fan of marathons. Oh, yeah. For... Oh, yeah. For Stella. A money raising for the development of Stella. Ah, that's um, cool. So it will be late June. We're going to be doing 12 hours from noon to midnight on a Friday. So you will be here. 
Um, I don't have the date exactly set yet, but it's late June. And we'll be just doing, playing all the games. Um, I'm going to be going for some world records on a bunch of games because somebody beat my wall jump ninja record <laughs> by two rooms. So I have to reclaim that. <laughs> and, you know, playing all the games that are like long games that you don't have enough time to play them during an episode. Yeah. So um, I've already talk talked with uh, Stephen A. about that. He's all on board. He's um, the maintainer of Stella. So it's all official, all on board. Nice. And uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so we'll be doing that. Uh, so that is Draconian. Didn't play it much, but you've seen me play it. Um, and I don't think Stay Frosty is, but I don't think it worked before. Um, let's see. Is it developer? No, where is the... Oh, game properties that tells you. DPC. So this is DPC as well. Uh, there is an issue. Um, you have to look... Um, on the forums for this game because it auto detects that you have a um, Sega Genesis gamepad plugged in. Uh, oh, let's reset. There, you can see it on the top there. Sega Genesis, the graphic. Uh, so it's something you have to do. Um, I think in the develop in the settings here to make it go back to regular joystick. Anyway, that works. Uh, Super Cobra Arcade by um, Champ Games. Save key found. Oh, yeah, it supports save key, which is high scores, which is awesome. I don't know if it actually saves them, but it knows that it's there. Because I don't know if, how... Um, Dirty Harry, does the save key actually save things right now? Or is it kind of the same where nothing is nothing is saved? I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't actually save things. So this works perfectly, like everything is like working perfectly, all these really advanced games. So this is, this is, takes it, like I said before, it takes it from a don't buy to yes, definitely buy this now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dirty Harry says, I think it does. Well, the only, the only way we could prove that is get a good score in one of these games, uh, which we're not going to do right now. Um, and then Wizard of War... By Champ Games as well. This game's not out yet. Oh, you, you, it's not that yet. <laughs> it's a three on one line. I want to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's reset. Because uh, I can't stay on the line. Uh, it's pretty good. That like the pretty flicker's good. pretty. Oh, I mean, you can play with the settings, so it's more or less flickery. But the more phosphor you have the more trails but the less flicker yeah. but it's it's not bad like champ yeah, games yeah. has a great uh flicker management um uh software built into his games you could try it with amoeba jump and that uses the save key atari box oh yes i think it's pretty easy to get on actually it's, it's super easy to get like it just keeps a score like you get any kind of score and that's the high score there we go 40 we have to go back to the main screen and wait a bit. So it should say 40 is the high score, and it uses save key. So that if we reboot this and go back in, it should say 40, if the save key is working. Actually, I can just press reset, right? Where does it show the high score? <laughs> Where's the high score? <laughs> is this an old version? Oh, I'd have to load it on. I think this is an old version. Oops. No, those don't do anything. Shows when you start the game. Oh! No, it doesn't. It shows zero. Oh. <laughs> Where? Where? Where does it show it? Oh, there it is. Okay, Where? 40. 40 at the top. It flips. Uh, there we go. I see. Okay, so let's turn it off. Turn it back on. And that's one advantage this has over the Raspberry Pi, because that's kind of the competitor to this. Well, there's many advantages. Is that uh, you can just turn it off. You don't have to do a nice shutdown for oh, it. Yeah, yeah. And it boots up way faster than a Raspberry Pi. 
right, let's go back into Amoeba Jump. And all the lines are, see, it's all reset. All the scan lines. And it should say 40 if it saves it. And if it doesn't, then it's not doing anything. Oh, why do you have to wait so long? Uh, I don't know. Because I was waiting for so the... press space and wait a few seconds. Ah! Ah! No, I got a new high score. Oh, press space and wait a few seconds. See, I didn't have a score, and now it's showing it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it... Let's do it once more. Nope, didn't save it. Okay, Dionoid confirms it. We'll do this, we'll do it once more, just to make it be sure. Even though he's the programmer. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't believe him. But I just want to show it. Yeah. So I'll get a very terrible score. One. And then it should show one. Yeah, yeah so it doesn't yeah, save yeah. it yet. So there, there you go. Something to work on, something to put on the bug list. That the save key file is not saved. Or the feature list. Feature list. The feature Fe list. Feature, Upcoming feature, feature list. list. <laughs> so that is the Retron 77. Super awesome. Great work yeah. by, by everyone involved. Uh, apparently Dirty Harry is the, the guy who's taking the lead on that. But I know there's a lot of contributors as well. And of course everybody at Stella as well yeah, um, yeah. who contributes to make this version put on there. So that is a lot of fun, and now this is useful, and I will keep it out of the box because it was <laughs> it was in the box in the closet up there, <laughs> gathering dust, being a terrible relic, <laughs> and now it is gonna stay out because it's uh, it's it's useful. I may even bring it upstairs um, and put it upstairs on the on the TV up there, and plug a um, like a remote uh, joystick, like um, a Bluetooth joystick or something in it. Like an 8 bit, 8 bit dough joystick. So let's unplug that and get into the games. Dough joystick? Yeah, it's a company and that's what they named them. Oh, okay. 8 bit dough, as in Nintendo. Because uh, their first joysticks were, they look like joy, uh, Nintendo joysticks. So they named them 8 bit dough. Because they can't name things actually Nintendo at all. Right. Okay, so the first, let's switch over here. The first game we're going to be playing is Red Shirts. And the people in the chat actually did uh, guess that correctly. It is a uh, Star Trek themed type of game. Switch over to RGB. This can go over there now. There you go. Press down the middle button. There will be a solution for pressing reset version via joystick oh. oh that is very exciting because on old games like old homebrew that we're playing um i'll turn it on so you don't have to keep pressing it <laughs> um because it has game reset on the 2600 right and new games when you die they have menus and stuff and you press the button to start a new game but on old games it's really annoying because you have to go over and flick it so that's really nice so, 0503. And there's the three games we're going to be playing today. And we'll be starting with Red Shirts. And this is made by... Let's go down... Oh, also, Thomas Yance is working on a new um, interface as well for the Retron 77. So it's not as not as big it's just reduced down to the things you need to get to and it'll be accessible via the joystick ah so you don't have to so your joystick it. will have a tab button uh some or it's going to be on the machine to get to bring up the menu and then use your then use a the joystick so you won't need to have the this cable and you won't need to have a keyboard which would be super awesome yeah so if you don't have a keyboard plugged in does that mean currently you just have to accept scan lines? Yes, the default scan lines, yeah. That's correct. And they're not too bad. They're fine. And the, the general settings are fine. Like, it's got phosphor at a decent setting. And but, and you can't change those unless you plug in a keyboard? Yes, at this moment. Yes. <laughs> but these are cheap. You can get these for probably $2 from China somewhere. Uh, Dirty Harry's leaving. Thanks for popping in and filling in some blanks for us on the Retron 77. And thank you for everything that you have done. Um, so this is made by Jared Kitchen, a.k.a. J-Rock. 
And this is technically a work in progress, even though the last update was in 2010. He did not declare this finished. Um, oh, the cats want in. Let's see if they are behaving now. Instead of attacking your feet. Hi. Well, it's the good one. Not the bad cat. <laughs> oh, I hear the bad cat coming. They're both bad. <laughs> They're both bad and good. And good. So, let's see. Find your ship. There's oh, there are seven. Seven red shirts. Okay. Uh, other games. This is a 32K game. Uh, other games he's made. Armageddon Complex, Charge, Circus Galacticus, Mega Italian ah! Twins, Red Shirt, Santa Scab, Superman and Brainiac. And this is available. Ah, I've been uh, red shirted. And each guy you get is a different red shirt. I know. Which is a very nice touch. Uh... Uh, this Aha. is available in the Atari Age forums if you want to get it. Oh, Stephen A, Stephen a um, says Save Key and Amoeba Jump is working, but when you shut down immediately, it doesn't save the data. Oh, so you have to go back to the menu or something like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it does save it. So it just needs a bit more saving. Yeah, some really good animation in this. That's probably what took up all the 32k. It's like the seven different characters' oh. animation. You're not doing so well. Oh, the Fuf green lady! You're fulfilling the red shirt's destiny of death. <laughs> Have you killed a guy? Yeah, you did. I've killed a bunch of them. Oh, we can't shoot through that. Use that to your advantage. Hide behind the rocks. Hide behind the rocks and shoot his legs. How many times do I have to tell you, you helping doesn't help? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, he, oh! he posted, November 23rd, 2010, hey gang, I haven't updated anything in a while, so I thought I'd post some progress on a game I'm working on. I don't get any points, though. You got 38. Yeah, but I keep shooting stuff, and, and you have it have doesn't go it. up. You have to kill it, I I've think. killed stuff. Well, how'd you get 38? See, 38. Oh, well, how did you get those 30 Maybe you points? only get points for getting closer to the ship or something. Oh, maybe. Well, we will find out. Oh, J-Rock also makes the famous shower scene demo. Okay. I have not seen that. I've named it Red Shirt in honor of those sci-fi kamikazes of legend who would beam down to hostile word worlds and meet their inve inevitable doom. The basic idea is that a Captain Kirk type sends his hapless away team down to various planets to accomplish missions. The planets are a six by six grid randomly generated at the start of each level. So it would be, oh, six by six. So six down, six across. With mission objectives randomly placed on the grid. Walk through that? No, no points. Press a button while you're in it, maybe? No, nothing. It's just decoration. Uh, the mission objectives vary from level to level, including various tasks, such as locating down shuttle crafts, uh, as in this one level demo, killing certain bad guys, rescuing uh, fellow crewmen, etc., etc. So I think this is still the first, he didn't go beyond um, a demo for this, so I think you just have to get the downed craft and find it. Oh, no, nobody in this one. Oh. They can't shoot through walls, and you can't shoot through walls. Don't you, I always do better with why that. Why are you closing in on him? <laughs> to shoot them. I told you, shoot, it does shoot, not shoot. help. Shoot, shoot, shoot. You're not helping. <laughs> um, I settled on a display routine that allows for 30 hertz multicolored player one for characters. So, as you can see, they are flickering constantly. And that's a 30 hertz flicker, so every... So it's drawing it twice, or once, every 30, 30th of a second. Um, 30 hertz player zero for multi-purpose, scenery, traps, effects. Um, so it's like those trees, yellow trees. Um, and 15 hertz player zero uh, laser fire. This game, still a ton of stuff planned for the game. Uh, idea, idea I'm striving for is a game that allows you to earn tons of bonus points. Oh, you're still at 38. I think there are no points in this game. I think it's just... I think you start at 38. <laughs> yes. And then you... You never get up. You never... But you never go down. 
You never go down. You know, far. you're not penalized. But also, you have for not sucking found the ship either. So no. maybe you get points for the ship. Were the ROMs removed? I could not find any. Uh, for this game, no, they're they're there. They're totally there. Uh, so he said, "Thanks for the feedback. Here's an up updated version addressing certain bugs." Move joystick with no button moves the crewman in eight directions, which you figured that out. Hold down the fire button locks the crewman a aim in a certain direction, so there is strafing. Did you find that? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. I want to see that. Do that. Do that right now. Okay. 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 <laughs> Why? Why? Why are you attacking feet? Why are you attacking Darcy's feet specifically? <laughs> Um, move the joystick with the button held down, strafe the crewman in eight direction, uh, without changing the direction he's aiming his laser. Tap joystick with button held down, perform a, perform a combat roll. Ooh. Tap joystick with button held down, so hold down the button and tap the joystick. No? No? Took it out? Doesn't work. Doesn't work! Maybe took that out in this one. Uh, along with him to pop out from behind terrain shooting enemies. A second joystick tap or a button release will fire the laser. Hmm. It's weird it's not working. Can I mega fire on? No. It's normal. Uh, strafe mode. If you hold down the fire button for a second, then rapidly press it, you will continue to fire in the locked direction while moving. So tap and then hold it down. Right. Try that. Try that one. Whoa! What's happening? What are you doing? No. Tap and hold. No. Hmm. Weird. Lies. They're all lies. <laughs> None of these things work. Bug fixes. Playfield bug. Oh, these are gone. So we didn't see them to begin with. Uh, select switch increments the background color and score tracks background decimal values. So the select switch. No, lady, don't shoot me! Ah, green dude! Oh, it does change the background color. Oh, only while playing. Let's find a nice color. Ooh, that's not good. Can you hold it? Nope. Purple. Purple. Blue. Nope, nope, no. Nope. Come on. Off you get. Causing trouble again. It says 116. Oh, that's the color of the background, I think. Oh, don't have so it's not a score. All. Yeah, no points. No! The lives are working. Uh, oh, is that... No, that's health, not lives. Okay. Um, Red Shirt, if people are wondering where that's from. Uh, Red Shirt is a stock character in fiction who soon dies after being introduced. The term originates from the original Star Trek... Uh, 1966 to 69, television series in which the red-shirted security personnel frequently die during the episodes. Red-shirt deaths are often used to dramatize the potential peril that the main characters face. And uh, they didn't happen in uh, so much in Next Generation because security wasn't red shirts anymore, they were orange shirts. Uh, okay, but they probably died with the same frequency. I mean, they, somebody has to die, or else there's no danger. And I found an article that said Star Trek red shirts weren't statistically the most likely to die after all. Let's see what statistics they have on here. Um, in the Star Trek technical manual, over the course of the three seasons, out of 239 red shirts, 25 died, which is 10%. Out of the 55 gold shirts, 10 died, which is 18%. Still less than... Re that, that, that's statistic. statistic. No, this is, this is, this is BS. <laughs> we're, not, we're talking about how many died. Not, <laughs> not how many... Of course fewer gold shirts died. There were fewer of them. That's right. So that's how you can manipulate statistics, boys and girls. <laughs> it's by saying, no, gold shirts died more. When in fact, more red-shirted people died. That's right. Okay. So you can so you can lie either way. You can you can change your statistics one way or the other. Next gen red shirts were commands. That's right. Uh, they okay. switched. 
So they it used to be gold, used to be command, and then and red was security, and then they switched it. And somebody also pointed out that um, Scotty and Ohura wore red shirts. Of course, they very rarely went down, or did they? Red. Well, actually, I mean, Scotty was the one who com who yeah, used the transporter. He doesn't. He didn't go down very often. Ohura went down to the planets, but probably not as often. Don't know. And he was engineering. Engineering. Because there were four things. Mm. There was uh, the colors. You mean? Well, there's. There were there's... only three colors, but there were four categories. Because mm. there was science, uh, security, and command. Yeah. And engineering. Ugh! Jitter. Jitter. The bane of my existence. Is it? Of your existence? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. At least the display. Ah. 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 See. <laughs> not so easy, see, is not it? Not so easy. No, is it? it is not. And you don't even have your toes being murdered. <laughs> oh, I did a roll. Somehow. See, I shot her head. Yeah, I did that a lot too. Except I only, I always did it with. Oh, it's double tap. Double tap uh, for the roll. I yeah. always did it with the lady. And the first lady was always my killer. You can do a backwards roll. Oh, okay. I don't know why. She distracted them with uh, witty banter. <laughs> like you don't have to kill them. No, I know. Like you're, you're. I, ah! mostly, I mostly didn't kill them. Looking for the ship. Oh, that's the bottom of the screen. So I'm down to the bottom. Ah, ghost, space ghosts. Ah. Nope. See so if you do this, you kind of cheese the game. Yeah, you're cheating. Yep. <laughs> but I want to find the ship. See, so you, you cheated yourself, though, because you have nice, <laughs> safe... You keep dodging out of nice, safe screens. Uh, oh, that's true. <laughs> that is very silly. So I think you start in the middle? No, you start at the top corner. Oh, you do? I believe. Top yeah. left corner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next gen red shirts were in command. Ah, ah. Oh, they, she missed me. I think it's, engineering was ah, included in command. Or ah, oh my god. I think I'm going to stay along the bottom. Oh. Because that's a safe screen. Not safe, not safe, not safe. Oh, it's staying. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Need him kicked out again? <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's good. My toes are being chewed upon. Oh, he's mad. Oh, it's because his toe is stuck in my sock. Oh, well, who did that? <laughs> I know, we know what. Pixel? We know who's to blame, but seriously. Who did that to themselves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm on the right-hand side. Oh, a little bug there. You can see him wrapping around. Oh, that's exciting. But he hasn't updated it in ten years. Or... Nine years, so I don't know if he's going to come back to this. And ah, 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 ah! Don't shoot me! I'm just looking for a down ship. We're trying to claim the ship. Oh, is it theirs? Well, oh, they, oh found oh, it. They hope they hope it'll be theirs. Hooray! Hooray! Go into the exhaust. <laughs> I think you won. And do a roll. Woohoo! Doing a roll. Let's go into the side. Let's walk up the ramp. Do, 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 do. And <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a a demo, the demo version. Like my new profile image. Uh, I can't see it from here on this, so I don't know yet. Oh, actually, hover above it. Did he change it to something good? Or is he trolling us? Or click on it. It's a blue play field with a brown and a tiny dot. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I love it. It's, it's amazing. So, <laughs> no? Yes? Yeah, it's, it's not offensive. <laughs> um, so that's the game. I think we got everything. It, yep. I thought it was more complete than it was, but it is truly just a one mission demo and you can't complete the mission. But it's got the gameplay. Like you can die, you can kill the kill the bad guys. 
And it's a great idea for the ga- a game. And the first lady in the skirt is substantially better at murdering the aliens. Yes. yes. <laughs> or at least when I was playing, she was. She was and, always... And I mean, there's still bugs. Like, if you go in certain spots, it gets all oh, extra jittery flickering. and stuff. But uh, I wish he continued it. Because no, this is not... That would be super cool. This is not um, at the point where... It, well, I don't know. Oh, see him yellow. Yellow. Oh. <laughs> that no. uh, a bug a bug yeah. minor yeah. bugs minor bugs it's a crosshair over a duck hint okay oh now mallard season yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> i see it's a tiny duck i think it's just too small for us to see okay that's that's pretty much it for this game i think but i think it if he continued it it would have been really really cool like you have different missions and i think it's too easy to die though like those guys are pretty brutal the enemies I actually didn't think it was that. They let you get shot three times. You only have That's to shoot true. them, depending on who they are. <laughs> it's a little little uh, imbalanced in your favor. Yeah, I agree, Militant Buddhist. This definitely does need to be finished. Because uh, it has such a great idea. So let's go on to the next game, which is Pong. Arcade Pong, in fact. So I'm going to actually... Arcade Pong. actually going to load up what arcade like Pong look like in the arcade, the actual Pong arcade, because we need to, because somebody with this, this game that's coming up is somebody trying to recreate arcade Pong as, as precisely as possible on the Atari 2600. So there we go. Original arcade Pong, 1972. Switch back. That over to the screen where everybody can see it. Boom. So let's take a look at that. Oh, I'm trying to click on a picture. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> so there we go. Got the two paddles. You got the ball. You got the score. You've got the net, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty simplistic. But I think the challenges were um, the physics. To emulate the, the exact bouncing and the exact physics and the, the exact speed of everything. Um, so we'll see how well they did it uh, to emulate it. So I think we got the idea. <laughs> There's not much to it. There we go. Let's load up Arcade Pong, and I believe we do need to use the paddles for this one because it was not a joystick, it was a paddle game to begin yes, with. For sure. And that's why I think they included paddles with the Atari 2600. Was well, so you could play Pong? Or yeah. Or because Pong was popular? Pong was still, you know, it Relevant. had gone out of favor a little bit by 1977, but it was still a very popular game. It was popular enough that a uh, paddle style. Yeah, controller. controller seemed relevant. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean they made a lot of really good games for for the paddle. Uh, oh, we switch on. back over. Pong, not the twenty six hundred thing. It's twenty six hundred version I was thinking of. No. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, they are working. Nice. <laughs> Usually they don't. Oh, nope. Nope. They don't let me select certain things. So I usually have to plug them in after. There we go. So let's boot it up and get it on everybody else's screen. There we go. And plug these back in. And I don't, th- I think it's only a two-player game. I don't think there's any AI. And I don't think there was any AI to, in the arcade either. I think you had to play two-player. But somebody can correct me on this. So this is made by David Galloway. Um, he first started making it in 2006, July 4th. And this build is from February 13th, 2019. 
So he's been working on this for 13 years. I don't know <laughs> if that's a record, but it's damn close. That's a really long time. Is 4K. Uh, Player 2 has a Atari Vox speech and high score hardware. How did you get it to talk? Oh, it's just that the Atari Vox is plugged in right now to the um, second port. I don't know if this game has any talking, but because it probably doesn't because the original one didn't. So he's made uh, Arcade Pong, Boeing 2600 demo, and Mega Man 2600. Let me reset it. There we go. Able to move? No. What? Oh, I'm no. I'm winning, though. Oh, but I sense that it will continue to... <laughs> Forever. All right, tied. Tied game. No, there is a setting uh, da, 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 that you can switch the paddle input. I moved the defaults to the second. I moved the defaults to the second port. Um, the right difficulty switch, left right paddle port. Okay, right difficulty switch. Okay, you should be able to do it now. No, no, maybe I have to reset. Oh no, there you go. Oh, okay, there you go. You're good. You're good. It was just not centered. Okay, but I'm gonna read a little bit about this. So you can practice hit it, playing against no one. <laughs> Hi, over the last few days, I've taken V-Dub Bobby's Arcade Pong Kernel, very nice, and I've fleshed it out a little. I've published some of the versions, some in introspection on my blog. I'm pleased with the way the sounds came out. Oh yes, to emulate the sounds as well. And I'm very happy with the way Bob's Kernel can display large scores on the playfield like the original arcade. Here's the current work in progress. So here's the latest oh. version, he says. Are you winning? <laughs> Just barely. I should be winning by more, but it hit your paddle. <laughs> I was so excited when I was winning, too. Oh, Ground Trooper says, Wow, this must be what they used in Bumblebee when Bumblebee was playing Atari and Pong was on the screen. It sure wasn't Video Olympics. Mm -hmm. So this has fractional velocity and, vo and position for the ball. Um, do you know what fractional velocity is? Did I talk? we talk about this before? Uh, we may have. So fractional velocity is so if you if you just have non-fractional velocity you can only move one at a time one pixel per screen update like that's the lowest you can that's the slowest you can move so fractional would be you can move half a pixel yeah per yeah frame. we did talk about that yeah yeah, yeah we did so so that makes it more accurate because it can be, you know, it, it would only be able to be round numbers. Yeah. Um, improve, improved point detection, improved ball on screen, and Y bounce top and bottom. Uh, velocity zones, check battle, ball, paddle collisions, prevent double triggers on paddle collisions. Um, so you can select different games. Um, serve ball position slightly more accurate to the arcade. So he's trying to make it Ah, perfect perfect arcade like the ball position starts at the exact spot it does in the arcade right, everything right. perfect which is an admirable thing to try added an attract mode a serve delay like the arcade pong paddles were too fat the <laughs> paddles were too fat before mm. no uh, now they're oh. too fat the ones on the uh, uh, webpage, on uh, they were the video small. they were very thin yeah oh fat width yeah it's no, excuses uh, yeah excuses. It is just excuses there's not much going on in the screen you can make them any width you want uh, um okay so let's play what i already won you did well then i good. have to get revenge oh they are really fat they're very chunky it's very slow <laughs> i'm guessing it just it increases speed every time you hit it Depends on the angle, I think. It's not too jittery. It's pretty good. Is yours jittery? Or is yours pretty steady? Oh, very steady. Mine's a touch jittery. Mine is definitely a touch jittery. But it's not bad at all. It's not oh, no. like jumping, so. And it's speeding up. And it's getting there. It's the angle. And it was first to 11 or best out of 12? Because I saw it was 11 to 1. Yeah. So we'll find out. Or maybe we won't. <laughs> this needs to speed up a lot more. Oh, no. That was a big jump in speed. Is it because you hit it at an angle? Yeah, you that's what so? I keep saying. 
Am I ignoring you? I'm just blabbing. I don't get to be right about too many things here. <laughs> I get to... oh, oh, yes! No! Revenge is mine. Oh, that slowed it right down. Because it hit the wall and then me, maybe? I don't know. Oh, mine's getting all jittery. The, the, the sharper the angle, the... Uh, also, the edge of the paddle, for whatever reason, makes it go on more of an angle. Well, you're hitting it at a... Hitting no, it on I mean, edge. it's like the... I tested oh. it. I tested it by hitting it on the edge instead of the oh. middle. Because I just See? hit it completely centered. It hit and it in the it middle and it goes centered. Yep. yep. That's what I was saying before I tested. Okay. And you hit it on the edge and it's all So like, that wow! gives strategy to you, depending on which... No! <laughs> which direct... Which... And you lost again by reading. No. It's because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. no! Giving up. Ice Post says he hasn't finished his Wizard of War sound effects. What are you doing, Ice Posta? Hurry up! No, lots of time. I don't know if they've finished that multi adapter. Uh, Nathan's finished his multi adapter yet for Wizard of War. Ah, and also yeah, the, I got a point. Uh, and also, the new Atari box has to come out as well. At the same time, are they selling the Atari box again? I think I missed this whole conversation that they're having about the Atari box. Don't look. No, look at the text. look at the chat. Look at the chat. Because Mallard season says, "When will Wizard of War be released?" Ah! And there was a problem with the box that wasn't found until Wizard of War was demoed by no! my, by myself, and it was it was not working because it would shut down. The Atari Vox, after a little while, it would go bleh, and then it would stop working. So a new Atari, actually it was the Atari Vox uh, Plus. What was it? Atari, yeah, the Atari Vox Plus was a problem. The original Atari Vox was fine. Um, but a lot of people have Atari Vox Plus. So they have to figure out the problem and fix that. Or just strip it back and, and sell the Atari Vox again. And then and then they have to have the multi adapter, so the Atari Vox could be in port two, and two joysticks can be in port one. But that's that's pretty much done. I had, I have a um, prototype version of that, and it works just fine. Oh. <laughs> So there's multiple things, and then I, I suppose has to finish his sound effects. So there's three things that need to b happen before Wizard of War comes out. But obviously Wizard of War is going to be a pretty good game changer because of the multi-adapter. And I believe Nathan is planning on doing a four-port joystick in one port, four to one, and then... And you can put four in second port and have up to eight players on the Atari at once. But four people opens it up to Mule. An Atari 2600 oh, Mule adaption. Yeah. Which may be very difficult to do, but not impossible. Because I've seen plenty of games um, that have like a screen mapping. Yeah, you did get a point. Because mine's getting jittery! Oh, that's it. It's not because I outplayed you. <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming or outlasted my, you. Blaming my controller. What is a bad tool blamer? Yes, and a bad craftsman blames his tools. And this is, <laughs> luckily, this isn't the craft. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that jitter. It's not too bad. The Atari Vox plugged in the second controller port save key. Right now, mine is yes. Why doesn't Atari hardware like that use the card slot, like game? Or Odyssey 2 voice. What? I don't think I parsed that correctly. <laughs> um, well, the joystick ports can... Oh, I just missed it. Joystick ports can read and write. So it's very convenient. And if you put it in... It's only got a cartridge slot left. It, there's only two, three inputs and outputs on the Atari. There's the two joystick ports... And then the cartridge slot. And if you make it part of the cartridge, like the save, 
then you have to build that hardware into every cartridge, which gets... Ah! Oh, you're trying to be tricky. Yeah, Two but more it, points. it jittered. It jittered. It literally jittered out of the way. <laughs> so it must be the, the per, it must be the first person to eleven then because we're at yes. twelve now. Yeah. So two more points, and the pain is over. <laughs> I mean, he's going for accuracy, not uh, playability. It's. I mean, there is points being scored. It's not like it's impossible to lose. Atari Vox contains a save key. Yes, that's where the save key is. It's just kind of a bonus. Atari Vox Plus contains a save key. Did the original Atari Vox not have a save key? Oh. That's two points. The paint is not over. No, it is not. You lied. Right on the edge of it. The top edge, but it's not as fast as you'd expect for hitting it on the top edge. And if they put out a new Atari Vox, I will relegate the one I have here to my Vectrex. And use this one. Use the new one for my 2600. Oh! The jitter. Oh, no! that <laughs> is it. Then it goes to demo mode. So for accuracy, big thumbs up, I guess. Uh, but it probably has difficulty settings, or they're available. I'm, the original Pong. Oh, that's true. Must have had some. That's true. Um, the selections. Oh, the selections for games are eleven to or fifteen points maximum. Uh, it, is the player zero difficult switch? I don't think there is any difficulty settings. No. No, but I mean the original one must have... No, the original one wouldn't. But the original one couldn't have been this slow. <laughs> because it's a pretty long game. But it was it's pretty one long and it was the first one we played. And I suck. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I don't know. It doesn't say, but maybe the black and white switch. I doubt it. I think it's going to be just as slow. Is that faster? It's a little faster. No, it's not faster. No, it's just slow. Okay. So, accuracy, big thumbs up. Playability, pretty boring because it's Pong. It's the first big commercial game that was ever made or released. Big hit. First big hit, let's say. Because there was lots of other games before that. Like Space War which was really, really complex and baffled people because they'd never seen a video game before. And there's like gravity and two ships and there's stars and a planet in the middle and people are like, oh, it's blowing my mind. And they went, okay, Pong. <laughs> <laughs> Press the button. We'll, gi we'll give you Pong. <laughs> we don't want space war. <laughs> so the last one is Hunchy 2 and it is a platformer which is a fun, fun time. Let's switch over that. Oh god, the cats tip away. Hooray. That was level zero. That's kind of the intro screen where you play into the game, which is cool. You don't see that too often. Uh, so this was made by Chris Walton, a.k.a. CDW. Uh, first posted July 5th, 2005. This build, October 10th, 2005. Uh, size is a 4K game. Uh, other games he's made, Boom, uh, Chattery, which is a very, very well-known game. Um, that's the uh, Tetris, really good Tetris for the 2600. Oh, I died. Which I don't have and I need to buy. And I think when I wanted to buy it, it was not exi No, I don't have it. It was sold out, so I need to buy that. Uh, Hunchy, Hunchy 2. Uh, we did play Hunchy before. That was part of the multi-game cartridge. Um, Jetman, which I think we played before as well, as part of a multi, uh, is Jetman 1K. Juno First, which everybody knows. It's an amazing shooter. Like, mind-blowing, awesome shooter. Uh, Luminez, which ah. I've never seen. Knight Rider, which I haven't seen as well, so it's good. Uh, we should check out that. This is available in the Atari Age store. 
um, also in the Atari Age forums. You can download versions of it, but it does come on cartridge. <clears throat> we need a 2600 version of Quadrapong, Impaler says. Uh, so, on the Atari Age store it says, For though he was gentle and kind, it was Quasimodo's crime to have been born hideously deformed. But one day his heart would prove to be a thing of rare beauty. She was Esmeralda, the victim of a coward's jealous rage. She is unjustly convinced, convicted of a crime she didn't convict, commit. Stop saying words that aren't the right words. Her sentence is death by hanging. Only one man can save her. Quasimodo. Victor. Written by Victor Hugo. Hunchy 2 is a sequel based to the 1982 classic arcade game Hunchback, which is loosely based on the novel The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Your task is to guide the Hunchback. Oh no! Quas Quasimodo in his quest to rescue the gypsy girl, Esmeralda. So you can start there in the middle of that second big paragraph there. Uh, his quest to rescue ah, the there gypsy girl. Hooray! His quest <laughs> to rescue the gypsy girl Esmeralda from the Cathedral of Notre Dame. To succeed, you must collect all of the bells in each cathedral room. You must also avoid any incoming missiles and the fearsome cathedral guards. They're fearsome, but also very uh, static. And so static that you don't realize that they, in fact, are cathedral guards. <laughs> They're not doing a very good job at guarding. <laughs> Uh, Hunchy 2 contains 14 levels of increasing difficulty. Hunchy 2 14. features okay. an original label by Justin Hergrove Oof. and manual by Tony Morse. Oh. And then there's a note here. Uh huh. Hi, folks. While the G8 protests are raging outside here, I have been staying indoors working on an enhanced version of Hunchy. The game now has changed so much that I am calling this version Hunchy 2 and keeping the old version as a mini game. I wanted to get away from the purely linear behavior running from one side to the other of the original and so the objective is now to collect the bells which are scattered around the screen. Okay. There are also ladders and platforms now and the guards can chase after you. The basic gameplay is... The basic games... <laughs> the basic gameplay is inspired right. by Chucky Egg, which is one of my favorite 8-bit games. Uh -huh. There is still a lot to do, but the attached version shows the display kernel for a single level of the game. The main problems at the moment are a few graphical glitches and a serious shortage of memory. If the background turns white or the screen Damn flickers, it. then please let me know. The current level is just to demonstrate the main kernel features. The actual game levels will be more interesting. Any suggestions for improvements will be welcome. Obviously, that was the first. Oh my God, that's that was two thousand five. Yeah, that's way back. The usual, as usual, the source code is included, though it is a bit of a mess at the moment. Let me know what you think. I will be posting regular updates to this thread. What? How do you get up there? Oh, there's a ladder. One little ladder there. Oh, what are you doing, bad cat? Oh, bad. Oh, oh, Keep your butt fall. on the couch. <laughs> Keep your butt on the couch. What? How do I get up there? You no, know, there's a lot of butt to keep on the couch, but you can do it. I have faith. What? How? Uh. Okay. I have to go down the cross. Oh yeah, of course. Don't oh, get on. shot by the bullets. It's also a maze too. Like you. Oh no. I have to go down this way. Down this way. This is challenging because you have to jump. Okay. No, you have to jump up to the next one, or you can't, no. can you? No, you can't. Yours? No, you. Okay, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> I made it to level four. Oh, of... you did the first level for me. <laughs> I, I did. Mm -hmm. Is this actually level two? Yeah, it is, isn't it? No, no, you did level zero for me. Oh, level zero. Death Race has... Milton Booth says, Death Race has some of my favorite cabinet art ever. I don't think I've seen that. I must have seen it at some point. Uh, okay. Uh, he said this was inspired by Minor 2049er, which we played last episode, uh, which is a terrible glitchy mess on the 2600. <laughs> a terrible, terrible, terrible. But I currently have the high score in the uh, homebrew tournament, round number two. 
the uh, and let's see. He said, thanks, it is certainly inspired in part by 9249er, but hopefully the controls are more responsive. I have managed to avoid flickering the sprites. I hope you enjoy the latest version. Uh, in October 10th, 2005, he says, okay, for completeness... Uh, run, run, run. Oh, you did it. For completeness, I have attached the final version of Hunchy 2 to this message. It is essentially the same as the previous version. Just a few small uh, tweaks to the ending sequence and a bit of code cleaning. If you spot any bugs, then please yell, as it will be committed to ROM in the next few days. The Hunchy 2 card is going to be released at the Philly Classic next month. This is 2005. Uh, with a nice label and manual. I'm planning to attend the show myself, so you might be able to obtain a signed version. Oh! Ask, stupid ask. guard wasn't even moving! <laughs> he is doing his job. He's I know, very but... well. No, I, I didn't say he wasn't doing his job. He had murdered me. He was clearly doing his job. I had complained earlier that he was doing such a stealthy version of his job that uh, I didn't realize that those were dangerous situations. Yeah. No! Oh! I knew I was going to die there. So that, that makes it worse, not better. Now, in 2017, he posted, I have asked Al to remove Hunchy 2 from the Atari Age store at the end of the month. It's been available for 12 years, and in that time, the quality of the Atari Age homebrew have increased to the point where I no longer think this game represents good value for money. And now after he posted that, there was a huge outcry in the forum saying, please don't remove it. It sets a bad, uh, bad precedence of removing old games. And people are saying, this is a really good game for 4K, which I agree. It's, it's a platformer with multiple, multiple levels. How many did he say? 13, 12? No, stay here. I don't know. 14. 14 levels of uh, platforming is really, really good. Um, for 4K, it's amazing, actually. Like the really big danger is staying on the side where the bullets are coming from. Yeah. So, like... I think I can make it before that bullet goes off the screen. But you should actually wait for the bullets ugh, to come on the screen knowing that you're not near where they are before you head to the left-hand side. Like this one's a... Ah! Like that. <laughs> Big danger. See, I'm taking a risk right there. But I can should get that one right now. Nope, nope. Run. There we go. And this reminds me of one of my favorite games as well, uh, Jumpman, which has same mechanics where you can fall and grab onto ladders mid-fall. I remember that. Yeah, it's just such a really uh, game that has really amazing controls. And this has very reminiscent, and I think somebody in the forums brought that up as well, that it's... Um... But Jumpman had a very... Uh, and it had bullets going thin, across. Uh guy very thin yeah much thinner he's this is quasimodo though and he has, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, ah. Good, good 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 this is the one i have uh trouble with yeah the gameplay is very very tight it's like you press the direction it does it are those bats in the belfry yes they are they're bats that Go in exactly one direction, <laughs> I guess. Okay, now this is the hard part. I did make it over this. You can't go up that. So this is the only path up. Every other way is You have blocked. to make this jump twice. Yeah, twice. And you have a time limit, too. <sighs> how close to the edge can I get? You're living close to the edge. Is, is, Let's see is, how close. Uh... You can go right off it. As long as your sprite is still on it. So that is what I have to do. It's like you're riding on your, your back hump. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That helps a lot. Ugh, terrible. Ugh. Ugh. That's the that's James word. Ugh. There, now I can get up there. Ugh. Ugh. Yep, there we go. Ugh. Hooray! Now I can finish the level. Or not? Can we go up higher? No. Oh, I have to go around this way. 
Uh, ooh, how do I get that one on the right? Yeah, I think you have oh, to get it Oh, there's a ladder. Last. Oh, I see. Um, I think I'm going to do this one first. Yeah. Yeah. And then this. And then fall down here. And go up here. No! Oh, there's a ladder. Yeah. Huh. Mazy. Very mazy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I knew it! Shot by bat. <laughs> don't look very bad. Oh my god, come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Game over! There we go. Huh? Let's see how well you can do. I would make those bats a different color from whatever the maze is on. Um, they may be drawn by... No? Actually, I'm pretty sure the bells are drawn by oh maybe they're not uh, the bells are drawn by the player zero missile for sure because they just look like that because they're two and four and eight and one and you can draw bells really well with uh, the missile and the play field is obviously green here so that means that that is drawn by player one, the bullet in this one, or bat, whatever it might be. Um, but in, in the other levels, we'll have to see. I'll analyze the other levels when we get to it with the guards. So this just has bells. So that's always, that's the same as well. Let me read the hunchy instructions. No! Oh, in case we're missing anything. I don't think we are. It's pretty straightforward. And I read the summary. Let's see. Let me load up the instructions. Making noises. Games. G2, there we go. Load up the README. Hooray! That was your... That's what killed you last time, right? Many times. Oh! Gameplay. Yeah, we know that one. Joystick controllers and left controller. Yep. It doesn't th throw any bats when you get up to that part. That's why they stopped. Oh. Just so that it's not so unfair. Because you have to walk a, quite a distance, I guess. Practice mode. The game will enter practice mode with the left difficulty switch in position A. So we're not in practice mode. In this mode, you can skip a level by pressing the select button on the console. Ah, cheaty. Ah, so you used the, my knowledge that I passed on to you. That's how games work. <laughs> That's how they work in the arcade, too. You just watch other players and go, ah, okay, now I can do it. That was close. Uh, scoring. Your score is based on the bonus timer. So if the timer reaches zero, you receive no score. So if the timer reaches zero, I thought you'd die, but you don't. It's just your score. It's only your score. Only the score. For games like this, where it's levels, until I finish the whole game, I don't really care about score. I just want to make it to the end of the, the levels. Oh, I haven't been analyzing. Yeah, that one looks like it's drawn for some reason. By, by the play, by the ball, which is the same color as the play field. But maybe he did that on purpose because why would he change it all of a sudden from player one? Oh no, one. you're screwed. You have to go all the way around again. Well, not screwed, but <laughs> now you are screwed. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he drew that one in blue to make it just a little bit harder because he could have used player, um, player one. Um, graphics for that. Hunchy is too is awesome except for the annoying walking sound. Uh, I, you don't mind it while playing. Do you mind it much? It actually helps when you're adjusting a tiny little f bits, but it is he is a quite a noisy walker. 
He's a, real, He's a noisy walker. He's a noisy walker. Sounds like something out of uh, Seinfeld. They were there complaining about somebody. Yeah, that guy, Dave's. Dave's a noisy walker. Oh. And see, so you can and see in this one, player one is the guard, and then the missile is uh, the blue as well. Blue missile is missile one. So they don't actually use the miss, uh, missile uh, zero. Did you make it further than me? <laughs> or did I die on this one? No, oh, I died on this were, one because I couldn't. You were on this one. Because I couldn't hop over that. <laughs> I got over it once, but you got over it once too. Yeah, but you made it further. Oh, she follows you. <laughs> they did that with this. They did. They did that with the swishy pants thing. So, oh, so they did do it in Seinfeld. With corduroy pants. Speed run. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! That was a close one. Speed run! No. <laughs> I'm doing it pretty fast. It's a very small margin of error yeah. for those guys. You can just go over them. Well, not just. It's not too bad. Uh. And then it stops. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Because it would just kill you. <laughs> and this one is a skill check. Yes. Definitely. It's like a... a yeah. Like, you can't continue to play this game until you figure out how to get through that spot. That's why they make you do it three times in a row. <laughs> it's like, you got it? Yep. You sure you got it? Yep. Come on, get up there. These ladders with one... Oh, oh my goodness. Cat, cat snot everywhere. Oh, I don't know if there's snot. Just a little bit of air. I felt a big spray of liquid. It's not good. <laughs> so, I want to get... <gasps> not that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh my Look God. what you did. I have to go did. anyway. I have to do this part anyway. Oh, cat. No, why are you chewing on cables all of a sudden? I know you chew on cables, Psst. but not these cables. He, needs, he wants attention. You got it. <laughs> you got negative attention. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. I got attention. Negative attention is good as any attention. It's like a bratty kid. Come on. Yeah, you have to drop down and then. Ah, uh, that's why. But I have down a life now. For no reason. No, no, you died. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> also, you had already declared it wasn't your cat's fault that you had already had to go back there because you went the wrong way. True, but I died in the process, so I blame the cat. But it's not the cat's fault. Not that I died. No. The... Nor that you had to go that way. Oh, boy. You declared to me that you had to go that way anyways because you went the wrong way. It was... Okay, it was. Uh, off this? You jump. have to jump and get it right. Uh. No, do it wrong. Do it right. Uh, ah! <laughs> God, I have to jump over this thing again. Do it right. Do it the right way. Stop doing it the wrong way. Oh, there you go. I do like that you can stand on top of the uh, ladder and you look Psst. like you're standing on top of the ladder. Sometimes the, the way the character looks affects how, whether or not I feel like I can jump. <laughs> true can i just grab that yes okay oh god uh okay i can jump and grab that 
one. Yeah. Get back on the ladder. This I need to go over first because yeah. I'm fall and get that one. Ladders, ladders are good. They catch you, but sometimes you don't want to be catch. Caught. Catched. Catched. Get up there. Okay. Oof. 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 Both directions now. Uh, this one you go. Uh, yeah. No, I'll get this first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can get this one. That's the right way. Yeah. And then I'll come back down. Get that one. Ooh, yeah, and that bell, you can't get back out. So I'm gonna leave that one for last, I think. Oh, no, I have to go up and fall down to get that one. And then this, then this. Uh, whoa. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And then that. And the rest. Oh, the guard is, like, doing his spear thing now. doesn't reset the whole board. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh my goodness. Where it's gonna come out of. Vicious bats. Vicious, vicious bats. And then this, yes. And then drop and fall and get that one. Oh, oh no! The game is over! <sighs> Do you want one more go? No. Okay, I'm gonna try one more. Then this game is relegated to the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, making a list of the games that are going to be played at the marathon that I need to complete. This will be one of them because it has levels. Hi, are you going to chew on things? Better not because I can't see you on all times. Yeah, the faster you go, the more points you get, so. Mm hmm. Whoa. Did you know it's going to do that? No, that was a lucky one. Not skill. <laughs> Can you fall as far as you like? Yes, Thunkist. Unless the like... Unless it's in Unless the you would like to fall further than the length <laughs> of the screen. In which case you die. Yes. Because that means you fall into a pit. Hi, you little beast. Yeah, there Where are, are pits. Going? So as long as you land on a platform, you are good. They don't stop. Uh, it's after two. It's after this. Oh, there's a, a yeah. Oh, there's a break. Okay. Yeah. It's not because you're there. It's not because you're there. It's because it's, there's a break. So yeah. there's timings. It seemed like it was because you were there, but it was just because our timing was correct. <laughs> just ha We just happened to be there yeah. when we should be there. Oh, you almost fell to your death. I did. I haven't died yet, have I? No. Ugh. 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 <laughs> what is he doing? Sounds like he's chewing on something. I think he needs to be kicked out. Get. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, are you going to stand here too? They don't like to be separated. Unless you can't use your bro. <laughs> I'll chew on your foot. <laughs> oh, God. oh, that was close. That was too close. Arrah! I jumped at the wrong time. Whoa! Holy jumping. My foot just barely missed that one. Hi. Are you, are you dismayed? Because you can't get escape the room now? Dismayed! Oh, that was alarming. It was. Wow, the the bats are batting around like mad batty kids. Mad battings. Yay! No, you might need to go out. We'll see. Let's kick you out right now.
Yeah, let's not leave it up to the future. Let's leave it to the present. Oh, you're being good. I'm sorry. Go play with your brother. <laughs> Sometimes the cats are cute. Sometimes they're always cute. Oh, that's true. That's appearance. They're always cute. But sometimes they're trouble. Sometimes their attitude isn't cute. Yeah. Oh! oh. oh. Got cocky there. I did. I did. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You just have you have to be on the left here. And then it's random death on the left. Uh, I no. The uh, bats have a pattern. Oh, do they? That, that's how we know. We know from that previous. Uh... That's true. Ah! I don't know if you're intended to learn the pattern throughout the game. Oh, yeah, I have to go down there now. Probably. Because it's very important. See, like here. <laughs> Whoa! That Whoa. should have been screenshotted! Oh, oh! Stabbed in the butt as you tried to jump back. See, you got, you did too well before that, I and you were, you were made to pay. Yep, it was punishment for doing that wicked awesome move. Anyway, there you go. Level seven, best ever, my best ever. <laughs> I'm sure there's many people who have finished Is this, this level one. Finished this game. Oh my God, they're moving now. Yeah. Oh, Do they jump? Gee, oh. Oh my goodness, they jump. Oh, and then... Is he actually following me? Is he doing a pass? He's following you. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um... Hmm. Can you get him batted? <laughs> batted? I doubt it. I bet he's immune to it. He will fall, but he will not jump. Uh. He will climb, however. Uh. <gasps> Oh, oh, that's a hard level. Oh, that is like Load Runner. Have you ever played that game? Nope. The guys just so. beeline for you. They will go up the ladders. They will go across. They will stay like if you're above and they're below, they'll just stay below you. They don't have AI to go around. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a Load Runner behavior. That's really really good. Wow. Well, I'm done for now. I think. <laughs> But we're definitely going to revisit that game again. Uh, I'm going to put that on the list for the uh, marathon so I can complete that game. Oh, somebody did mention Load Runner there. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Minor, 24, Minor 2049er and Load Runner. I mean, Minor 2049er, you have to walk across every platform, every spot of every platform. Uh. This is more like a mix between. Well, that level, Load Runner and Jump Man. But in Jump Man, no. I remember in Jump Man, you were like swinging at the bottom of. Is that, am I crazy? No, 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 no. Jump Man is, is all ladders, and mm -hmm. you have to collect these kind of cross things, and there's bullets that come out slowly. And if you cross their visual path vertically or horizontally, up. they go and shoot against you. Mm. And, and when you fall, when you got hit, you go boing. Boing, 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 boing. You fall down and, and hit yourself all the way down. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Um, anyway, that... That was on Commodore, right? Yeah, it was on the Commodore and all the other 8-bit uh, systems as well. And I know uh, Daryl Spice Jr. is working on something that's very, very, very close to Load Runner. And also when you got the things you're supposed to get, sometimes platforms disappear or ladders disappear or ladders move. So you had to kind of get them in a good order mm. or your your maze would be all screwed up. Death by Pachinko. Yeah. Perfect description. <laughs> oh my God. That's a perfect description <laughs> of the death in Jumpman. <laughs> yep. Um, Ground Trooper. I played a, I get, I just get so frustrated with Load Runner. It's so hard because of that mechanic. Like they're on you. Yeah. yeah. They just, there's like six of them and they just kind of close in on you. But you're faster than them. And also you can dig holes that they can fall in and or fall through. That's that's your um, that's your weapon. When they fall through, you can walk back over them. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at what we uh, uh, played today. We had the Stella 6.0 update, which is awesome. 
So it's not a game, but definitely goes from a don't buy, run away, we're wasting your money to <laughs> definitely buy awesome portable Atari 2600 playability. Um, bring it to your friends. It's super small. You don't even have to bring a cartridge. As yeah, you SD don't need card. to like do fancy uh, configurations to plug it into a newer system. It no, uses... HDMI. Yeah. Play it on anything. Uh, you just need to bring power, an HDMI cable if your per the person doesn't have it. One or two joysticks, you're good. It came with a cable. I think it did come yeah. with a cable. So you don't even need, you don't need to buy these things. Yeah, yeah. But so they come with it. Yeah. I think it's like a hundred US this 100 us around that so i think it's worth for its functionality if you even if you have a 2600 because you can plug it into modern televisions really easily yeah yeah. because old ones are just that's the key is that it's like a an easy yes. an easy uh, method yeah. and now that this is using stella 6 it's right up to date oh it's called the retron, retron 77 oh Somebody's at the door. Yeah. Might be something exciting to unpack, so entertain the masses. That's not, that's not gonna do it. I could tell you my joke. Did I tell you my joke before? Okay, so this is this guy. And uh, he goes to the doctor, he says, doctor, I have this problem, I have worms. Uh, it's disgusting, I need you to do something about it. And uh, so the doctor, uh, doctor says, no problem. We got we got this covered. I need you to come back tomorrow with two bananas and a cookie. And uh, the guy he's he's at he's at the end of his rope. He needs he needs to deal with the the uh, the worm situation. So he doesn't even think about the two bananas and the cookie. He just he just shows up with the two bananas and the cookie. <laughs> and then so he gets there and then the doctor's okay. Well, you know, take your pants down. Oh, and, and he's like, oh god. So. He bends over and the, and the doctor grabs a banana and he jams a banana up his butt and then he takes the other one, jams it up there and then and then the cookie and the guy's like, Ooh, what's going on? He's like, I know it's, it's gross, it's a little disturbing, but it will work, just trust me. And so, I mean, it's only 29 more days. So the guy comes back day after day, uh, two bananas and a cookie. I don't know why the guy has to supply his own, but he does, it's part of the system. <laughs> and, uh, and on uh, day 30, uh, the doctor's like, Good news. Uh, tomorrow, I just need you to come with two bananas. And the guy's like, well, okay. That's already an improvement. <laughs> he shows up. Doctor, Same as usual. He bends over there. Doctor jams two bananas up there. And uh, he, he reaches over and he, he grabs this baseball bat. And the guy's a little concerned. But he just stands there poised, waiting as the guy's bent over. And the worm sticks his head out the guy's butt and says, hey, where's my cookie? And the doctor slams him on the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> It's not the, not the worst joke, but not the best. I've heard that a lot. It a is lot. the best joke ever. <laughs> it is the joke. So, yeah, Retron 77 by Hyperkin. Um, and you'll get the new joystick with it when you order it. The Trooper. The Trooper. So this is something that is somewhat related to video gaming. Not really. Oh, no, that side's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I opened up the right one. Yep, yep, we're all good. Let's see. I got a new mouse because my scrolly thing on my mouse is like intermittently working and not working. And so you gave them more money for another one? Or? I've I'm had that one for a long time. Oh, okay, yeah, I do the same thing. And it's a very nice, rounded, ergonomic mouse. Except that I moved on to the future with a track trackball <laughs> mouth. That's true, where you need no room track man. anywhere. You can just put it on your knee. Inside your it face. It is the future. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, something to drink. No, no, no. <laughs> Isopropyl alcohol um, for cleaning cartridge uh, connectors. And also cleaning. It's 99% with USB. I don't know. United States Postal something, maybe? I don't know. Some sort of regulatory body. It's 99% isopropyl alcohol and purified water, but I don't think that's true because it. I think this stuff has methanol in it too. It does. Yeah. Which, how could it be 99% alcohol and have only purified water is the non-medical ingredient i don't know anyways maybe isopropyl alcohol includes methanol it could yeah but um tanya said this one's good to buy for cleaning things um because um 
I don't know if I told you my Uno cart, this one, was not working when I got it. And recently somebody, like we went through so many things, firmware updates to this and trying a million things. And eventually somebody, I think it was I supposed to said, hey, why don't you just, why don't you try cleaning the cartridge and your system? And it worked. <laughs> and this was months, months of me working with an Uno cart developer and him making firmware updates for the Uno cart. <laughs> it was brutal, brutal. But it didn't make any sense because this was working in other systems. So it was actually my, my uh, system that was dirty. Yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, also, my Harmony cart, I cleaned that and it was filthy. And it was only booting up, it was failing to boot up like one out of every two to one out of every three times I turned it on. I don't oh. know if you notice that sometimes. I turn it on, it's like, oh, turn oh, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. on again. Huh. Almost every time now. Wow. It boots. <laughs> so, the lesson is kids, clean your cartridges and clean your Atari 2600, and it'll help a lot. And yeah, my specifically the inside of your 2600. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, just get in there and, and get a uh, Q tip and clean all the contacts. Um, and it also, now my Activision games work a lot better now because they were also having trouble and clean them, clean them all. If you're having trouble, that's the first thing to do. Don't assume the cartridge is dead. It's, yeah, yeah. it's dirty. That's yeah. most likely. And it's cheap, cheap to fix and easy and, and, and quick. And this isn't enough. That makes it worse. That, uh, makes, in the long, in the long run, it makes it worse. Yeah. Cause you're putting, um, moisture, moisture, semi salty and, moisture. And then it, it rusts pretty much. So uh, next episode, you want you want to tune in. We have a world exclusive premiere of ninjish ninjish guy in low res world. It's a very hard word to say. Ninjish. Mm. It's like ninja. Um, it's but he's only ninja ish. He's only a little ninja ish because he does die. Yeah. You know, a ninja shouldn't be shouldn't be dying. And it is uh, where's it's. By the same developer, uh, VH said, V C Z H. I think that's it's it's four letters. It's hard to memorize. Um, the same guy did Night Guy in Low Res World. Have you played that one? No. It's a platformer, and this one is is just as awesome. It, it's it's a lot more improvements. So used the same game engine, and did all new screens. So this will be the world premiere. It has not been released yet. No binary has been released, so we will be the first to play it. So make sure you tune in on a Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we will see that. And also we're going to be playing Project Z and Jupiter Sumo. And then on the Friday, we'll be playing Yahtzee, Isaiah's Wii Chase, and some other games I don't know yet. And then the next Wednesday, we'll be playing a secret new game from Champ Games. Oh. And it's so secret that I won't even know what the game is. Until you're playing it. Until we play it. And he's added a security measure on it. Nice. That when you put the game in, it asks for a code. <laughs> so if you don't know the code, you can't play it. So he's... so. He'll give you the code on the show? John Champo will be in the chat, and he will give me the code live... Before we play the game, that is awesome. so that we can't play it beforehand. That is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it is. It, I've never <laughs> heard of that for an Atari game before. That's so good. And it, it's just for fun. It's like it doesn't matter, but it's it's a fun thing to do. And then he'll send over the instructions, and and uh, how to play it and everything like that. Nice. The background on it, so nobody will know. And I've already get, made a graphic up for it. And it's like unknown, super secret game because I have to have something to put on there. Super funny. <laughs> um, so you definitely want to tune in for that. Nobody knows who, what it is except for the people who worked on it. Um, and I've heard of a bunch of different games he was thinking of making. So it could be one of those or it could be something completely new. Because I know he's made some progress in some games. So it might be those, but I don't I don't even want to say the names of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll, on the June, June 19th, we'll be actually playing the uno cart with the games on it and uh the developer that i was working with he has made the first two uno cart dependent games 
So they three only three work cartridge. with, yeah, it's 3D printed cartridge. Yeah, that's cool. So I'll be playing the first two, and they're unreleased. They're not even announced, I don't think. The first two Uno Kart dependent games ever made. Hmm. That's on June 19th. And then on, I'm going to, let's see, what day on June? Because it has to be a Friday. Oh, I can't count that many. ahead. It's going to be like the 21st or the 28th. We're going to do the 12-hour marathon, whichever weekend you're here. So if people can count, two, 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 two. Actually, I'll do that right now. So what's the date today? It's the 3rd? May 3rd? So 17th, 31st, 14th, 28th. So most likely it's going to be the June 28th. Actually, it will be June 28th. Yeah, so it's going to be June 28th. We're going to do the 12-hour marathon. Hooray! As long as you have nothing, you're going to be here. I nothing don't planned. see why I wouldn't be. Okay, yeah. awesome. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play a whole bunch of games. We're going to have high score challenges. We're going to have world record challenges. We're going to have, like, complete the game challenge as well, like hunting Will two. we know ahead of time which games? Oh, okay. We'll know, we'll know some of the games. We'll have suggestions from the watchers. It's like, hey, get this score on this game, or I want to see you guys play this game, or whatever. It's going to be all homebrew. Um, uh, we're going to be also looking at Stella, because it's going to be a fundraiser for Stella. And we're going to go into the options of how awesome Stella is, and how good it is for developers, and how handy it is, and going through all of its awesomeness. And, uh, and oh, it, on deck as well, of course, Dan Kitchen's PRGE 2018 interview. Um, but I want to release that just before we play Dan Kitchen's Gold Rush game. And that will be the first game ever made by a developer that used to make games in the 80s and 90s that was, now is making homebrew. Um, there was one other guy... But he was finishing a game that he started in the 80s. This is a brand new game. Actually, it's kind of a continuation. But he's made it from scratch, this this game. Um, and that's Gold Rush. And then uh, Bon Voyage as well, eventually. But we don't know the dates for that, so I can't announce the dates. We don't know. So thank you for tuning in. Solve level 600 at Jammed. There you go. That a, that's a perfect example of a, um, a challenge. <laughs> sure we'll do that <laughs> thrust thinks that's hard because he made that game uh, <laughs> so obvious, obviously it's a challenging one that'll be a good one for tanya she loves puzzle games but we can all put our minds together so i will be there darcy will be there erilyn will be there and tanya will be there so all of us will be there um playing the games somehow fitting on this couch because so we can have a chair over there and somebody can sit kind of over here as well yeah We'll make question. it work. Uh, how was Arcade Pong for you? Got here late. Um, it played perfectly. There's yep. no glitches. Um, it. I mean, I've never actually played it in the arcade, but we did look at a video of the arcade version beforehand. Um, I think the only thing we noticed was the paddles seemed a bit wider um, than the arcade version. So Not in the effectiveness way, but in the thickness yeah. not not height yeah. um so that that seemed fine they seemed the right height yeah. just the thickness me needs to be taken down maybe a pixel or two so it's not quite as wide but other than that i don't know no glitches the bouncing seemed good um but that's about it yeah and that's the guy who uh who created it and that's one of the great things about the show is that almost all of the developers come in and and watch and ask questions and provide feedback so yeah and he's still working on that because it's a work in progress oh it's because the play feel i i was thinking it was used for the paddle um are the players not the players used for, are the players used for the score at the top maybe that's why okay so maybe it's unavoidable that they have to be that wide so i don't know if that's possible to fix but uh, other than that it looked really good played well yeah, the score did look like the arcade version. Yeah, it looked the, thin enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I think that's is, is that why? Um, use the players. Yes. Yeah, he used the players for the score, so that makes sense. Because otherwise, it would be a lot chunkier, like the score looking. So it's a trade-off. So 
probably using the player characters for the score is closer than using the play field for the score and then using the um couldn't you use them for the score and the paddles and they don't overlap so they wouldn't flicker they do overlap that's the problem because oh, the score is below the, where the paddles are. Yeah, the score is in the play field. Right, right. I'm, I'm the, the player area. Let's not call it the play field. Yeah. It's to try to get the score on the screen. Yeah. 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 So I think it's a fine trade off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it totally makes sense. So good on you. Awesome, awesome conversion. I mean, it's probably better to get opinions from people who are a lot more familiar with Pong and the angles and speed and everything. But to our layman eyes, it looked, it looked and played really well. Yeah. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, join us again next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. GMT, and we'll be back with Erlen. And Darcy will be back in two weeks. Two weeks. On a Friday. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.